All right, in this video, I wanted to discuss the role of a few important chemicals in energy processing in cells, and these molecules are energy carriers. So I wanted to clarify what the energy carriers are, how they work, and where they're involved in cellular energy processes. So let's start by outlining what our energy carriers are, right? Um, what do they do? So the first thing is that these molecules move some usable energy around from one part of the cell to another. Um, these molecules are what I would describe as being pretty transient or short-lived. So they have a really quick job. They grab some energy in one spot, they move it to where it needs to be used, and their job is over. And so it's really important that we differentiate um, this movement of energy from the storage of energy. So these energy carriers are not for energy storage. Energy storage is long term. And if a cell wants to store some energy, that energy will be stored in carbohydrates, sugars, or lipids, fats, but never in these energy carriers we're talking about. Again, these have a really quick job in terms of um, moving energy around. So that's their job. These molecules are going to move energy from one part of the cell to, to another. Um, let's think about what their identities are. So we're going to talk about four kinds of energy carriers. We'll name them one at a time. As I display each of these names, I'm going to display sort of two names because every one of these energy carriers has one name that describes it in the form when it has low energy and another name that describes it in the form when it has high energy. So for example, we have ADP and ATP. These two molecules are closely related, and one, ADP, is a low energy form of a molecule that can be transformed into ATP when it is carrying a high, or when it's in its high energy form. All right, so again, every one of these will have two names. The first name is the low energy form of that molecule. The second name is the high energy form of that molecule. So ADP and ATP, another one we'll talk about is NAD plus or NADH. Again, NAD plus is lower energy, NADH is higher energy. Uh, FAD and FADH2, again, FAD is the low energy form. FADH2 is the high energy form. And then finally, NADP plus and NADPH. NADP plus is the low energy form and NADPH is the high energy form. All right, so these are the energy carriers we want to understand and be able to discuss. And I'd like to um, break them into two groups. We're first gonna talk about ADP and ATP. We'll see how it works, and then we'll lump these other three together. You might notice by their names that they have some things in common, right? And so they actually behave in a very similar way, and we'll lump them all together. So let's, again, begin with ADP and ATP. So as you study the energy processes within cells, you're going to learn a lot about ADP and ATP. And so I just wanted to show this image to highlight their role in the energy processes. So this diagram here represents the processes by which we extract energy from the food we digest. And this is true for any organism that digests food. So uh, we'll often learn about glucose and how that's digested, but we can digest amino acids from proteins or fatty acids from lipids, right? And all of these fit, feed into these cellular processes. And on the right here, you can see that these processes produce ATP. So ATP comes out of these processes of food digestion. So we're capturing some energy that was in our food and we're putting it into this ATP molecule. Then in our cells, we're gonna take those ATP molecules and use them to power any cellular process that requires energy. When we do that, we will take the energy out of ATP and we're going to generate back the ADP that can get reused in these processes to make us more ATP. So there's an energy cycle inside cells, right? We digest food, we put the energy into ATP. We use that energy shortly 
thereafter to power the cell. That produces a DP waste, which we can use to make more ATP from our food energy. All right, so we're gonna, you'll le undoubtedly learn a lot more about these cellular processes. But right now we're just thinking about how is AD, how are ADP and ATP involved in the process? Again, ADP is like a dead battery. It has no energy in it. You charge it up, you have ATP. ATP gets used, they take the energy out of the battery, you get a dead battery out, and you put it back into this charging process. So let's look at just a little bit more regarding how ADP can get sort of charged up to be ATP. So here we've got a diagram that represents that energy flow. So let's start here at the bottom. We can see an ADP molecule, adenity, adenosine diphosphate. And this molecule, importantly, only has two of these phosphate atoms on the left side over here. When ADP gets charged up and has energy added to it during the uh, digestion of food, we take one more phosphate and we jam it onto the end to form ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So this molecule now has three phosphate atoms here. And these phosphate atoms repel one another. So keeping them close together like this is sort of like compressing a spring. And that means that these bonds are holding a lot of energy. If we break one of these bonds, this phosphate goes moving away as fast as possible. And that releases energy. So we store energy in here in this high energy bond between the last two phosphates. When we want to take the energy out, again, we break that bond. We release that phosphate, often it'll get attached to something else, and we get back ADP, that form of adenosine diphosphate. Again, it only has two phosphate molecules and it's lower energy. And again, we take it back over to those processes that are digesting our food, like glycolysis or um, the Krebs cycle, and we add uh, that phosphate back on to make ATP. All right. So that's one form of an energy carrier molecule. ADP, ATP stores energy in this bond between these phosphate atoms, and we use that energy directly to run cellular processes. Now let's think about those other three energy carriers. And again, we're gonna lump all three of these together in one role. They all function the same way, and they function as electron carriers. So we have three electron carriers. Um, NAD, NADH, FAD, FADH2, and NADP, or NADPH. So these three molecules carry energy, but they carry a specific form of energy. They carry some electrons, and those electrons have energy in them. So these molecules are going to grab some electrons that have energy. That's going to turn the molecule into the high energy form, the one listed on the right. In these cases, they all end in H. And then the, these molecules will drop off those electrons somewhere else. They carry them to a new location, drop off the electrons, and they get turned back into these low energy forms without electrons, the forms that do not end in H. So we're going to think about how all three of these work, but we're just going to describe them as one process. They all work in the same way. They're involved in slightly different steps of processes, um, but again, they all work in the same way. So um, in terms of one detail might be good to know is this NADP, NADPH molecule is only used in photosynthesis. Again, it works just like these other two, but you'll only see it involved in photosynthesis. For this video, we're just not gonna talk about it anymore. And let's focus on how these two the first two electron carriers function in cellular respiration processes. So let's look at that. So let's take a similar approach to how we thought about how ATP and ADP work with these electron carrier molecules. So let's here, let's start at the top of this diagram where we have NAD plus or FAD. So two electron carriers, these are the low energy forms. Again, their job is to pick up some electrons from somewhere and carry them somewhere else. So they're going to pick up some electrons from this molecule over here, 
the R's represent that it could be any shape molecule. So we can get electrons from lots of different things. And then more specifically, we're going to take the electrons in the form of hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms contain one electron each. So these two highlighted hydrogens move off of this molecule. So we take away the hydrogens, we leave behind this oxygen and the two R groups, and we put the hydrogens onto NADH or FADH2. There's a tiny bit more going on behind the scenes in terms of the chemical reaction, but that's the idea. We take away some hydrogens from one atom, from one molecule, sorry, and we put them onto these atoms. And now these NADH has an extra hydrogen, FADH2 has these extra hydrogens, and along with those hydrogens, it has their electrons, and the electrons have energy. So now these molecules can just take those electrons somewhere else in the cell and drop them off. So here, the, these electron carriers are gonna drop the electrons off onto another molecule. Here's a molecule that is lacking some electrons. So we're gonna give away these hydrogens and their electrons to these molecules. And now this molecule has more electrons and we get back our low energy electron carrier that can be reused in that process over and over. So where in the cell does this tend to happen? Electron carriers are also used in our food digestion processes or cellular respiration. So again, you'll learn a lot about this. The details here aren't important. Um, I'll just point out that there's a few steps. In a couple of these steps, we're seeing that ATP is being made. We saw that a few slides ago. Again, this ATP will be used somewhere else in the cell to power cellular processes. But on the right-hand side of this diagram, we can see that NADH, more NADH, and some FADH2 is made. And that gets cycled down this side to this electron transport chain step. So electron carriers, their main job in cellular respiration is to move electrons from glycolysis, um, this pyruvate processing, or the Krebs cycle. So they're picking up electrons here and they're moving them to the electron transport chain. And they're gonna give the electrons to that electron transport chain. And we're gonna get out those empty electron carriers again, NAD and FAD. So for one glucose molecule, 10 NADH go in here and two FADH2. So we get 10 and two of those out. Now that we have those empty energy carriers, they can just get funneled right back into that process, right? So again, this is a cycle. Put electrons into these molecules, take the electrons out, and then send the molecules back to get more electrons so they can keep progressing through that cycle. So again, this video, we were summarizing the roles of four electron, or sorry, four energy carriers in cellular processes. We've got ADP and ATP, and then we've got three very similar electron carriers that all function in the same way. So I hope that helps put these uh, the roles of these molecules into perspective. As always, if you have any questions about that process, please let me know, and I will talk to you all very